Um, hi. What has happened here? I'm, I am so concerned. Hello and welcome to my channel. Welcome back. I took a little bit of a hiatus. We're gonna do some life updates and we're just gonna talk about like the state of the luxury community right now. And oh, I am so dismayed by what I have seen. Like what is kind of going on with the luxury industry with creators, how they seem to be like dropping like flies. It all, it, it, it people make it seem like and just kind of like where my headspace is also at as well. Obviously, the shot heard around the world. I mean, th this happened relatively recently, but this is but this has been kind of like happening over the course of time. We're going to be chatting about that, a couple of other things, and just catching up. So uh, because I because it has been so so long since I have filmed. First and foremost, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you are new, uh, my name is Catherine and I worked in the luxury resale industry on the ground in multiple uh, stores with different businesses over the course of 10 years. And um, I share all of my insights on what it was really like working uh, in that industry. So we do shopping tips, I do. I also work as an authenticator. If you're new, if any of that's interesting to you, um, please hit the subscribe button. So now, um, I'm going to talk about why a lot of luxury creators in particular um, are moving away from this as a subject or genre. I, I really honestly don't want to be among the other hordes of people who made a video about one, one, one creator in particular because honestly like piling on people, especially like other creators whose videos a lot of you watch alongside mine, that's not wh why I put on all this makeup and fire up this camera every day. Like, in spite of some of the, you know, things that maybe were discussed that I don't entirely agree with. Like, I do empathize with the points that this one creator did make and a, a, a few of them. What I want you guys to understand is that people selling off and purging their collections happens all the time. Especially if you're in the business, it happens on like a quarterly basis. People will purge 50, 100, 200 bags at a time because like ultimately like this is a hobby that sometimes people cycle out of. In my next video, I'm gonna specifically talk about reasons why people sell things and do large purges like this. But I, And the only thing that's different basically is that these are people who have followings and you guys are now like a viewing audience to something that happens literally all the time. And there are all kinds of people who participate in the shopping for all kinds of different reasons. And if we want to be real, a lot of those reasons are bad reasons. And in my fully unsolicited opinion with very few independent verifiable facts what a lot of these creators are describing is like an unhealthy relationship and fixation to the luxury goods and no matter what if not centering your your life and this as a hobby this as in content creation or hobby around something that you that isn't healthy for you like then you know good for them they're Absolutely are people who view these things as status symbols um, and treat people better or worse depending on which brand or which bag they carry. There are absolutely people out there who buy these things and go into debt for it in order to impress people, hopefully people they know, but also strangers. There are people who do this for clout. There are tons of people who buy these things because they feel like they're that's expected of them. There are people who make irresponsible budget choices. I'd be lying if I say I haven't done it. Apparently people are competing against each other. Now, I don't get it personally. I'm not running anybody's race, but people, that is a reality for some people. If you get, if you, like, if you feel, if, if, if anyone does feel like they're having like a problem or an unhealthy compulsion in their lives, um, and, and you do a real introspection, you do that work with a therapist or, you know, internally, and you know, you come to the realization, like, and I, and I invite all of you to do this as well, like really think about why you maybe are behaving or reacting to things the way, the way that you are. And you come back with like, you're trying to fill a void or you're trying to impress people or you feel incomplete in some way and you think that these things will complete you, like, that's not good. 
Um, but in all seriousness, some people obviously have described having an addiction and that is real. That is absolutely real. And I find it a little like mean spirited sometimes when that isn't taken under consideration, especially with some of the creators that have expressed that. Now, no one is perfect in this. And I think that if you do that type of like introspection and you come back and realize that you're don't you don't feel like you're having a problem or you don't feel like this is causing detriment and you actually are genuinely enjoying purveying the things that you purvey, then great. <laughs> but I mean, some people are using this as a means of self-soothing and I think that it is, um, I think that it's a good thing overall that that's being expressed. Now, do I take issue with some of the ways that that's been expressed? Honestly, not really. Will I watch these videos and I did not feel judged at or preached to? Um, I know a lot of people did and I wouldn't take it that way. Even if they did mean it that way, which I don't think was the case, I wouldn't, I wouldn't care. <laughs> because I don't allow myself to be patronized to. I'm not inclined to read into things that way. You are in charge of how you let people make you feel. Again, I don't wanna use the word brave because I think that's too strong of a word, but for someone to actually admit that, to admit that that is how they were feeling and how they were, um, and the reason, or part of the reason why they were, you know, engaging in a particular hobby, like I, I really, I really value that insight and it, and it makes me, it makes me sad to think that, you know, some people don't have that same like internal self-worth and are using these things to compensate for that. And that just goes to show you that like, we are not all looking at objects through the same lens. We're not all engaging in it for the same reasons. And, um, I think that you get more longevity and it's a lot healthier, especially with this as an industry or as, as a business, um, when people are partaking in it in more healthy ways. So I'm doing a video like specifically about like why these purges happen. But you know, one thing I do want to talk about as well is that why people are leaving the luxury community. Some of it has to do with the fact that a lot of us started our channels in like the 2012 to 2017 era and we were in our 20s <laughs> we were living different lives we had different responsibilities and priorities maybe different incomes and and i think it was specifically relevant to the luxury community is that we were st still at a place where we were building a collection and like kind of finding out what works for us and what doesn't if you're building a collection once you have all of your main pieces like Continuing to shop with intention is difficult. And what what ended up happening with me with me in particular was I spent the last couple of years just kind of just once again like grazing and just buying up little the whole bunch of stuff that I you know knew in the back of my mind wouldn't work for me. There does come a point where your collection is like complete. That kind of is not congruent with being a content creator. In a world where we're expected to make consistent regular content, it's expected that we're having, that we're gonna be talking about new topics, new ideas. That's not to say that every video needs to be an unboxing, but if you're not sharing any new merchandise, then there comes a point where you're repeating yourself. And actually I do think about a time um, when I first moved into my old apartment. Um, for me, that was after a breakup and it was a large change for my, you know, financial situation. And that was at a point where I, w where I was afraid. Okay, afraid. That's not the right word. But there was a worry for me that I might never be able to afford to buy a designer handbag for myself again. Being a person who makes YouTube videos and having and leaning on that as like a third leg of my like f financial tripod um, at the time, um, that was scary. I actually remember getting a comment saying like, you talk about the same five bags all the time. Yeah, that's not really fun, engaging, exciting content. And once you've gotten to the point where 
you're happy with where your collection is like to continue to to continue to shop and to continue to engage in it i found certainly for myself that you end up like wasting a lot of money if you know that and if you're feeling that like to continue to engage in it when you're not having a good time anymore like why would anyone sign up to do that basically like once you've made a collection for yourself like there may not be anything else to talk about so this point is like me specific but a lot of the reason why I haven't been shopping and why like I haven't been so motivated to create content is because everything that's coming out I find abjectly hideous. So like that's outside of price increases, that's outside of quality control, like that is completely like I haven't even gotten to step one of like do you see something and like it and that I guess change in the fashion industry it's made it kind of difficult for me at least to you know make videos about this when i don't like anything that's happening what i've come to understand about myself and my shopping is that some people shop because they love fashion i realize that i don't that fashion isn't actually what i like what i like is the shopping another thing i've been like kind of chewing on mentally and i would love to hear what your thoughts are like I am not into anymore the idea of fashion as like self-expression. And if that probably doesn't make sense, so I'm gonna to kind of explain it. Like, so I just don't read into people and their bags or their clothing or their shoes. Last year, everyone was talking about the whole like quiet luxury and stealth wealth and it just really made me want to claw my skin off. It was, it's just like a foregone conclusion to some people that like you're trying to communicate status or wealth. And is that what we're doing? That's not what we're doing. That's not what I'm doing. I don't know what y'all are doing. I'm not doing that. I don't need people thinking about how much money I have or make. Uh. That's weird to me. <laughs> no, let's let's draw this out to its logical conclusion. If someone is carrying, let's say, a Louis Vuitton Neverfull, how much money does that mean they have? But what happens if the next day they're not carrying a bag at all? Then how much money do they have? Like seriously, fashion as really expression of anything to me, I'm kind of like off of that as a concept. I mean, and th this is just for me, but like, I just don't feel like I'm able to convey much of anything about myself as a person with a bag especially when you look around and you see what reading comprehension is nowadays like the idea that in order to just like for a lot of people in order to justify doing whatever it is the thing that you like to do that it has to have some kind of like deeper grand meaning to it when i think it's okay to just say that i i bought this bag because i like it i think that should be enough yeah, and I just think that there's no reason to read any read into it anything deeper than that. This dress I'm wearing, I bought at Target. It says that I went to Target. It doesn't have to be like some signifier of status. It doesn't have to impress anyone. Um, it certainly doesn't have to be an investment because it isn't. I feel like we don't give ourselves permission to just like things and just admit that the reason you do something is because it feels good. I don't think that there needs to be like deeper meanings and deeper reasonings in everything, especially things like pants. I guess my takeaway is be shallow sometimes. <clears throat> I don't know what to do with that. And I guess that's why I have such a problem with a lot of the commentary surrounding like people selling off their bags. To say that a person is broke and flexing and trying to look rich and living above their means. I guess what it makes me examine is like, I think a lot of people aren't able to enjoy um, these things if in their eyes the wrong people are also enjoying it. And that reeks of classism. I guess if you don't attach deeper meanings to these things, then maybe it's okay for other people to also enjoy them. Personally, I posit that any adult can afford anything so long as they're buying it for the right reason. I, really, I think that the right reasons to buy something are incredibly simple. There's only two. One of them is utility and the other is taste. Can you use it? Do you like it? It doesn't have to be any deeper than that. And if you are able to prioritize 
your finances in such a way uh, where you're able to make any bag happen for yourself, then God bless. Based on some of the comments that I saw underneath other creators' videos, I think some people are partaking in this for what I view as the wrong reasons. Attributing some sort of like mythical, I don't know, fixation to these things where they're just purses and you can just buy the things because you like them. But I cannot stress enough how heavily I advise against shopping for a future child, grandchild, whatever. Again, and this comes from working in the industry. I cannot tell you how many times people would come in to just sell off all of their, you know, recently deceased loved ones things. And you would be shocked to know like how your love of something, your hobby, etc., how often that does not transfer to um, the people in your life. Now, I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this. You probably have like amazing friends that don't give two shits about a Chanel bag. Picture that and now all of a sudden it's your kids. <laughs> but I think what an, not, not enough people take into account is that like their, their child is another person. <laughs> your future or hypothetical child is gonna be like their own person and they may end up liking your, you know, handbags or whatever, they may not. And what I recommend is like, don't start picking stuff out for your future daughter until you've met her. And like, for the longest time, I thought people were saying that as a joke. But then what I got to see down the line was like the inevitable, not inevitability, but like the uh, like downstream, what that looks like. First of all, there's no guarantee that handbags will even be a thing um in 20 30 50 years or or that the, the designers of today are going to be the ones that are cool down the line the hot designer of like 2085 might not even be born yet and also don't forget about what happened to balenciaga like people all the time say that they're shopping for their future daughters and you know well that's cool when it does work out like what happens if you have boys or or, and they don't eventually get married. Or your son marries a minimalist. Or maybe your hypothetical future son's future hypothetical wife has a has different style and taste. Or what happens if you don't like her? <laughs> if you do have daughters, um, it's important to like know them as people. And I think that as well, if you're going to keep this as a part of your mindset when you're shopping, which again, I advise against, you should shop for yourself. I think it would be better if they're like within five to 10 years of like purveying luxury and fashion on their own terms so you can kind of like get a grasp of it because again just so often i see like what it looks like when like the the love of the collection just doesn't transfer and it's not pretty it's not and for the love of god like don't shop with other people in mind just categorically like don't shop for a hypothetical version of yourself that attends galas don't shop to impress people and don't shop for your future grand niece. Don't shop to like convey or express something about yourself because I guarantee you whatever you think you're saying is not transmitting. <laughs> don't shop for the hypothetical version of you that's gonna start wearing pink. I'm calling myself on that one. What you should only shop for is your own taste and your own lifestyle. And you know, for a lot of people, the price tag isn't justifiable anymore unless they're able to get some of those like side benefits out of it. And I think that's worth examining. This is the first time I've sat down to film in my new place and uh, I'm losing my light. So I'm gonna end it here, but um, I am very glad to be back and um, definitely um, have some like different style kind of videos to come. Uh, so do check back. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And I want to remind everyone that like, this is supposed to be for fun and we shouldn't read into it so hard. So with that, <laughs> <laughs> Love to hear your thoughts down below. Um, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!